Hello, I'm Miss Carol from the Grand Ledge Area District Library. Today our story time is going to be about pirates. Okay, this book we're about to read is called A Princess, A Pirate, and One Wild Brother. It's written by Cornelia Funk, illustrated by Kirsten Mayer. It's published by Chicken House, which is part of Scholastic. And Firebeard was the terror of the high seas. His ship, the Horrible Haddock, sailed faster than the wind over the waves. Wherever the Horrible Haddock appeared on the horizon, the knees of honest seafaring folk would shake like jelly. Captain Firebeard had a fearsome crew. His helmsman was Morgan O'Meany. Cook was Cutlass Tom, Billy the Bald, Willie Woodenhead, Crooked Carl, and 20 more terrible pirates, just like them, made up the rest of the horrible crew. Whenever Firebeard's crew boarded a ship, nothing was safe. They stole the silver spoons and the captain's uniform. They stole the ship's figurehead, pots and pans, the hammocks, and even the sails. And of course, they stole all the casks of rum. But one day, Firebeard robbed a ship that he really should have left alone. On board was a little girl named Molly. Molly was off on a trip to see her grandma. The pirates leaped on board with an ear-splitting roar. Molly tried hiding, but Morgan O'Meany soon fished her out. What shall we do with her? He said with a smirk. Take her with us, you fool, bellowed Firebeard. Parents will pay a handsome ransom for such a little treasure. And if not, we'll feed her to the sharks. You'll be sorry for this, cried Molly. Morgan O'Meany rolled her up like a herring and tossed her on board the horrible haddock. When the sun had gone down, Bill the Ball dragged Molly to see the captain. All right, tell me your parents' names and address, or else, growled the Captain Firebeard. Will not, Molly growled back. If I told you my mother's name, you'd be so scared, you'd cry like a baby. At this, all the pirates howled with laughter. So Molly was put to work. She peeled potatoes and cleaned the boots. She followed cutlasses, patched sails, and scrubbed the deck. Soon every bone in her body ached. Three times a day, Firebeard asked her name and address, but Molly just smiled. Feed her to the sharks, roared Willie Woodenhand. Firebeard ground his teeth and said, she'll talk before long. Every night, the pirates had a party. They drank rum, staggered across the deck, danced on the ship's rigging, and bawled out the most terrible songs. But Molly had a plan. The pirates were dancing, she wrote secret messages and popped them into empty bottles. When the pirates were safely snoring in their bunks, she tossed the bottles overboard into the sea. She did this every night. One night, the pirates partied until dawn, but this time they fell asleep on the deck. Molly tiptoed over the tangle of arms and legs and threw her bottle over the ship's rail. Splish, splash, it landed in the deep, wide sea. Hey, what was that? Young Morgan O'Meany. 
The pirate staggered over the rail. It's a message in a bottle, they all cried. Bring it to me, shouted Captain Firebeard. Now! The pirates dived to the bottom of the sea. They searched and searched. But Molly's message bobbed away. Soaking wet, they crawled back on deck. Tell me what you wrote, demanded Captain Firebeard. But Molly just kicked at his wooden leg. Firebeard turned red as a lobster. Now it's time to feed her to the sharks, he said. But a cry from above stopped him. P -p 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 Pirates! shouted Ten Pint Ted in the crow's nest. Nonsense, scoffed Firebeard. We're the only pirates around here. But he was wrong. A ship with red sails was speeding towards them. A giant black flag with a skull and crossbones flared from its mast. What, who in the name of Neptune's beard is that? Stuttered Firebeard. <clears throat> That's my mom, Molly grinned. It's Barbara's Bertha herself wailed the crew with a horrible headache. Firebeard turned as white as a sheet, and the pirates rolled their eyes in fear. This time it was their knees that were shaking. And Bill the Bald's false teeth almost flew out of his mouth. The ship with red sails came closer and closer. Barbara's Bertha stood at the prow, swinging her cutlass. Wait until she sees my hands, said Molly. They're red and raw from peeling potatoes. That will make my mom the maddest of all. Firebird and his pirates roamed with terror. Soon, Barbara's Bertha was sailing alongside the horrible haddock. The ferocious crew swung themselves over the mast, the terrible roar. We're here at last. My pirate girl, cried Martha, cried Barbara's Bertha throwing Molly in the air. We got your message. Your grandma was beginning to wonder where you were. Now, how nasty can we be to these piratical nincom poops? Well, said Molly, that's easy. From that day on, Captain Firebird's pirate crew had no time to think about raiding ships. Willie Woodenhand scrubbed the decks. Morgan O'Meany and Cutlass Tom peeled vegetables from morning until night. Captain Firebeard polished Bertha's boots 14 times a week. And Molly was finally able to go visit her grandmother. That's the end of Pirate Girl. All right, the song we're gonna to do today is called If You're a Pirate and You Know It. This is the same tune as If You're Happy and You Know It. So if you know that song, you'll already have an idea of what, what we're going to sing today. So the words are simple. If you're a pirate and you know it, then in action. We're going to do, if you're a pirate and you know it, swab the deck. Swab the deck is a fancy pirate term for mopping the floor, essentially. Don't pretend you have a mop in your hand and you're just gonna Kind of slide it back and forth. That's verse one. For the second verse, we're going to do Say Ahoy. If you're a pirate and you know it, say Ahoy. And we're going to point like we're seeing something off in the distance. Third verse is going to be If you're a pirate and you know it, stomp your peg leg. And our final verse is going to be If you're a pirate and you know it, look for treasure. So it's like you're going to be looking through a telescope. Alright, I'll do the first verse, and then we'll start over again, so you can all join in then. So, if you're a pirate and you know it, swab the deck. If you're a pirate and you know it, swab the deck. If you're a pirate and you know it, then your actions will surely show it. If you're a pirate and you know it, swab the deck. Okay, you think you have the idea now? So, okay, remember, we're going to do a swab the deck. Say ahoy. Stomp your peg leg, 
and then look for treasure. All right, ready to sing along with me? Here we go. If you're a pirate and you know it, swab the deck. If you're a pirate and you know it, swab the deck. If you're a pirate and you know it, then your actions will surely show it. If you're a pirate and you know it, swab the deck. If you're a pirate and you know it, say ahoy, ahoy! If you're a pirate and you know it, say ahoy, ahoy! If you're a pirate and you know it, then your actions will surely show it. If you're a pirate and you know it, say ahoy, ahoy! If you're a pirate and you know it, stomp your peg leg. If you're a pirate and you know it, stomp your peg leg. If you're a pirate and your peg leg, then your action. Crap. Alright. Can I start over? Just restart that first. Just start that first. If you're a pirate and you know it, stomp your peg leg. If you're a pirate and you know it, stomp your peg leg. If you're a pirate and you know it, then your actions will surely show it. If you're a pirate and you know it, stomp your peg leg. If you're a pirate and you know it, look for treasure. If you're a pirate and you know it, look for treasure. If you're a pirate and you know it, your actions will surely show it. If you're a pirate and you know it, look for treasure. So do you think you're a pirate now? All right, this book we're about to read is called Pirate's Perfect Pet. It's written by Beth Ferry illustrated by Matt Myers, and published by Candlewick Press. From the deck of his pirate ship, the Sea Dragon, Captain Crave spied a little blue bottle bobbing along the waves, and the sharks. Captain Crave was courageous. He was daring. He was gone. With a flawless eye, he sliced through the water and snagged the cork with his hook. His crew cheered and waved and chanted, Go pray! And caused quite a commotion, as good pirates should. After taking a bow, Captain Crave uncorked the treasure within. It was a letter from his mother. It read, Dearest Clancy, how is my big brave pirate? Mommy's so proud you've become captain of your very own ship. Bravo! Closed is a lovely list. I found it. Be Your Best Buccaneer magazine. Isn't it tip top or ship shape or whatever you swashbucklers say? Try to stay away from sharks. Clancy some beer and remember, Mommy loves you. P.S. Here's a little something for your treasure chest. PPS, don't forget to keep your new hook clean. Captain Crave stuffed the letter and the shiny doubloon in his pocket. Me mom, he said with a shrug, handing the list to his first mate. Think you are the perfect pirate captain, she read. Use our handy checklist to be sure. Ship? Check, replied the captain. Courage and daring? Double check. Treasure? Check. Eye patch? Check. Hook? Check it out. Peg leg? Working on it. Pet? Pet? That's what it says. Well, shuck me an oyster and sail me to set sail for land. We needs to find me a pet. The pirates anchored on a sandy beach that caused quite a commotion, as good pirates should. They set out at once, scooping and digging. Crab? Too cranky. Octopus? Too clingy. Clam? Too quiet. Direct, said the Captain Crave. There be no perfect pets on the beach. Onward ho. The pirates marched onward until they came to a farm. 
They cause quite a commotion, as good pirates should. The crew scurried about, grabbing and hurting. Goat, too nibbly. Pig, too muddy. Donkey, too stubborn. Goose, too bossy. Brett, Captain Crave. There be no perfect pets on the farm. Onward ho! The pirates marched forward until they came to a zoo. They caused quite a commotion, as good pirates should. The crew began unlocking and unleashing. Elephant? Too big. Koala? Too cuddly. Lion? Yikes! When the uproar finally died down, Captain Crave said, Well, I finally got me peg leg. Check, scribbled the first mate. Now if I could only find me a pet. The harried zookeeper stuck the pirates into a trolley and drove directly to the Pet Emporium. The pirates crowded eagerly into the shop. There were kittens and bunnies, guppies and puppies, all kinds of cute, cuddly creatures. Shiver me shit zoos, Captain Crave exclaimed. There be piles of pets! Just then, there was a squawk from above. The captain looked up. Splat! I've been pooped at! He yelled. The pirates chased the birdie. They raced the birdie. Should we taste the birdie? Give her ear, ordered the captain. He eyed the parrot closely. Ah, he murmured. You're a brave one, I see. I, said the parrot. He pooped in me, I. I, echoed the parrot. And caused quite a commotion. I, agreed the parrot. Like a good parrot should. I? Asked the parrot. And everything would be perfect, mused the captain. If I could only find me a pet. Do ye happen to know land, sea, or sky? Any pirate worthy pets? The parrot stepped on the Captain Crave's shoulder, nibbled his ear. I said the parrot, parrot. Onward ho! Captain Crave flipped his shiny doubloon to the shopkeeper as he thumped out the door. The perfect pirate captain with the perfect pirate pet. <laughs>